Um, it is now 12 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Uh, I definitely want to get going on the webinar, as I promised, um, because it is now 12. And so uh, I'm really excited to share with you. Thank you so much for joining today. I'm just going to minimize this window. So my name is Anthony Taylor. I'm the managing partner at SME Strategy. And thank you for joining us on this uh, live training on how to create a strategic plan and best practices for strategic planning. So it's a huge, huge topic. I'm going to power right through it. I will send you some uh, stuff in email after this. You make sure you have the slides. I will send you a recording of this. So, uh, but so do your best to pay attention and follow along. And uh, I apologize in advance if I speak too quickly. I'm just very passionate, and we have lots of stuff to cover. So, here we go. Let's do it. So, what is a strategic plan? So, I mean, a lot of people talk about strategy and strategic plans. So it's really the choices that your organization is are going to make uh, towards getting to its desired future. Uh, it's the plan that you share with your team so they know where the organization's going. So it's just as important to write the, the plan for your leadership team as it is to share with everybody else in your organization. And it's how you measure success. Uh, having those metrics and having measurements and knowing if success was a place, how would you actually know that you got there? And that's what a strategic plan is for. So why do strategic planning in the first place? To focus your resources on the things that are going to have the most impact. That means spending your money in important places and not worrying about the less important places. Uh, to give a sense of purpose and direction to your staff. As you mentioned, that's the plan is not just for your leadership, but for everybody on your team and not to be surprised by and suffer from events that happen inside and outside of your organization. So your business is running, your organization running as it is now, and then things are going to happen. Not everything is going to be the same, and strategic planning helps you not minimize the bad stuff, but take advantage of the opportunities. And so I know everybody's going to have questions. You're going to have specific questions about your organization. Um, so we'll be able to answer that uh, later on as well. Just uh, just to double check, can everybody hear me OK? We doing OK with the sounds? If you can just make sure you hear me, um, just put in the chat box on the right there. Just say, yeah, I can hear you, just so I know uh, before I keep going that uh, you guys can hear me, and then I'm not just talking uh, to an empty room. So uh, right on the right-hand side, there's a chat box. It uh, looks like this. You'll see my name here. Uh, hi there, Gerald. How's it going? Yeah, actually, just who else is on the call, just so I get a sense? I know it's a small group, which I'm totally OK with, but just to get a sense of, of who's in the room, because um, I know that there's some people I know and some people I don't know. So just go on the right and just put your name in there, just so I can, you know, if, if there's a question, address you by name. Um, yeah, so if you could do that, I'll just take you know 30 seconds to go in there. Hi there, Rob. Is five by five the name of your company? Or are there five people in your watching this webinar right now? Hi, Brett. Awesome. Thanks, guys and gals. I'm really stoked to share with you guys. So this is awesome. Yeah. All right. Cool. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you taking the time on your lunch break. And we're going to make sure that this is uh, uh, super valuable. Hi, Kim. Hi, Kim. How are you? Um, I watch up here because my text box is up here, but then I have the screen here. So, all right. Thanks, guys, for sharing. Hi, Steph. Amazing. You guys are awesome. All right. So, a bit about me for those of you that don't know. I'm the managing partner at SME Strategy, uh, entrepreneur, author, and speaker. I'm a passionate soccer fan. I'm super stoked for Euro Cup. I'm a food eater. I'm not like a fancy food eater. I just like, uh, I like, I like food. Uh, thank you, Rob. I appreciate that. Um, and I started SME Strategy to help business owners with the things that they don't know. That's really the passion for my business is helping entrepreneurs. So when we talk about strategic planning, it's really planning for the future and, and being aware of what's going to happen, or what might happen, and to make plans uh, to be successful in that space. All right. So what might hurt you? So we talk about those risks. We talk about those things. So some of the things that might hurt you. So negative culture and toxic workplace. That's one of the things that really comes up a lot when we talk about strategy. Uh, competitors entering your market. What if somebody else tries to do the same thing you do? Uh, consumers changing preferences. They're changing all the time. Um, and if your business sticks with just one thing, you look at Blockbuster, they didn't adapt their strategy, and now they're gone. Um, technology changes. Again, I couldn't have done this webinar like 20 years ago. So those are different things that level the playing field and create advantages, but also threats to you. Uh, legal changes, again, depending on how you do your business, laws can change, policies can change. Bottlenecks in your organization, depending on how your organization is structured. Um, 
you might be working inefficiently and it might be harming your profitability at the end of the day. You might be too successful. You might be growing too fast and because of that, um, you haven't made plans for the future. Uh, managers are pulling people in different directions. So that comes up a lot in strategic planning that different silos, different people in the company have a different vision for the future and you're wasting money and, and it'll actually hurt you in the future. And then people don't know what they should be doing. So I mentioned twice uh, in the beginning that when we talk about uh, planning and communication, that it's really the plan for your employees. So if your people don't know what they should be doing, how do you expect them to be successful in all of that? Awesome. Uh, okay, so strategic plan, the purpose. It's for yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So a good strategic plan takes into account how do we get to where we are now? So that's successes, failures, strengths, and weaknesses. Okay, so we're gonna talk a little bit about the strategic planning process. Um, I will give you a template on how to do that after, but I'm really concerned with the best practices today. So how do we get from where we are now? Successes, failures, strengths, and weaknesses. Where are we now and where are we going? So when it comes to strategic planning, we ask ourselves, what is the vision? What is the mission? What are our values? What are our objectives? Let's do an environmental scan to see what's going on outside of us. Uh, inputs from within the organization. So what's the information that we have at hand uh, to guide our decision making and, and get those inputs from your team. So that could mean management team. That could also mean frontline staff. And I encourage both. And then what do we need to do and what do we need to be aware of in the future, okay? And that kind of thing is tactics, what are we actually gonna do, risks, what's gonna get in our way, and scenario planning. So planning for alternate versions of the future. Again, each one of these uh, topics is like its own topic, and so we could talk for a few minutes about each, and today we're just gonna focus on the strategic planning process. So if you're going through the process with your team, it'll look like this. So I'll just let you look at that real quick while I sneak a glass of water. And this is really, if you're building a strategic plan, these are the things that you need to focus on the most. Uh, vision, mission, values, pretty clear. Objectives are strategic priorities. We'll talk a bit about that later. Tactics, what are the things that you're going to do to achieve these objectives? Then your uh, SWAT, your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Uh, environmental scam, like we talked about, risks and action steps. So if you're trying to figure out, if you're here to figure out what is in a strategic plan, this is it. And you can download a strategic plan from smestrategy.net. Um, so then you write up your strategic plan and then you're good, right? That's it. You just, you write it and everything's fine. You have a strategic plan. Obviously, not exactly. Don't make a shelf plan. So a shelf plan, a strategic plan that sits on the shelf and does no one any good. So. That's what I really want to emphasize today is depending on the type of organization you are, if you're a government organization or a nonprofit that creates a strategic plan for others, then you might have to make a really, really long plan, like that's a huge binder plan and eventually sits on the shelf. But within that is you need to have your own internal strategic plan to guide your people. So that's what we're talking about today, creating a plan to guide your people, to guide your team and to move things forward. So strategic planning is a great opportunity to create change and the planning meetings are just the start. So I did a video that you can actually access uh, if you ask me for it uh, called before the strategic planning process. And it's all about, there is no beginning or end to strategic planning. It's constant. Whenever you did your business plan back in the day, that was strategic planning. Every time you have a team meeting, that's strategic planning. You might have a retreat, that's strategic planning. So don't worry about the actual document per se, although it's important to communicate. It's the process and the communication that's the most valuable uh, asset. So here's what I promised, because I don't want to uh, have you guys on a, on a webinar and you're like, well, he said he was gonna give me this and he didn't. So here's what I promised on the page where you signed up for this. I help you get alignment on your plan and buy in with your team. I help you create strategic priorities that will move those uh, priorities forward instead of doing projects that waste time and money. I'll help you create conversations so that the whole organization uh, knows what's going on and what they should be doing next, and then how to identify risks and opportunities before it's too late to do anything about them. So I'm going to share a handful of best practices that are gonna help you achieve all of those things. Cool? Cool. So 
Here are some challenges. Again, we talk about challenges because if everything was easy, then you guys wouldn't be here. Um, about challenges with developing strategy. So some challenges that come up, lack of alignment. That means that not everybody is on the same page when it comes to strategy development. People not buying into the plan is that they're just like, no, I'm creating resistance and I'm pulling it back and I'm making everything slow down. Lack of direction. We have no idea if we're going left, right, or straight. Um, and how can you build a plan based on that? Too many things to focus on. I see that a lot, even as uh, entrepreneurs I inherently. We try to do so many things, and the important thing is to do a few things that are going to create the biggest impact towards getting to that ideal future. Um, employees not empowered to make changes, so they can't uh, actually do anything when it comes to the strategic plan. They see it, but they can't impact it. Um, and then information silos. It means that information resides in people or resides in uh, different levels and uh, different teams, but nobody else knows what those challenges are. So I wanna ask you guys, what are some of the challenges that you have faced either now or previously when it comes to developing strategy uh, with your organization? So if you can go in the chat box on the right and just say whatever your uh, past experience has been developing strategy and some of the things that you're either trying to overcome now or that you've overcome in the past and that you've uh, been able to take advantage of through strategic planning and through teamwork and communication. So I'll give it, I think I'm on like a, a few second delay. So if you can just go on the box there and say some of the things that you're uh, hoping to learn. The other reason I wanna know this is because it helps guide my stories when I give examples or when I, uh, I talk about some of the best practices. And it also gives me a few minutes to think about it before I do my uh, answers in the Q&A. And we will be doing a Q&A. Uh, this presentation should go till about uh, quarter two and then we'll have time for questions after. So again, if you can uh, hop on the right in that chat box and just uh, put some challenges in there just so I understand where you're at um, and then we'll, uh, we'll get going from there. Awesome, and I'm sure some of you guys are typing and there's a bit of lag on my side, so. Thanks, guys. Okay, well, so far I don't have any challenges on there, um, so no problem, I will just keep going, and if you think of something that you're trying to, ah, oh, there we go, thank you, Gerald. So information silos is one. Um, too busy to strategize, accident, too many things, fantastic. Uh, wonderful, thank you, Cam. Getting the right people to participate. Excellent, thanks, guys. Way too many things to focus on, fantastic. Wonderful. So as you can see, too many things to focus on. So these are common problems and common challenges that everybody has. And so that's why building a strategy that emphasizes these things will help you get more things done. So thank you all for, for answering there. Uh, excellent, going fast, perfect. Well, growing fast, see? Challenges happening growing fast, so. Alrighty, so, there we go. That was actually, I was ahead of myself. So thank you for that. All right. So moving on, so moving on. I uh, interviewed 31 companies, or 26,000 people at 31 companies to figure out what traits align with strong strategy execution. So the plan is one thing, you can create the plan, and then there's actually implementing and being successful on the plan. So I know this might be hard to read, but number one is everybody has a good idea of the decisions and actions for which he or she is responsible. And the other one is information about the competitive environment gets to headquarters quickly. And third, once made, decisions are rarely second guessed. So these are probably larger organizations with several hundred or thousands of employees. But in this uh, interview and in this like survey, the two big challenges that they came up with or three biggest categories were decision rights, as in like how do we make decisions and how do things get done, flow of information, so we talked about information silos, but it's also sharing important information so decisions can be made quickly, and then motivators. That's one that we didn't talk about at all, but when it comes to people actually getting buy-in to the plan and people like wanting to contribute, that's a really important factor. There were there was one more factor, but these are the three most important right decision rights. Like, who, what are we going to focus on to move us forward? So again, those strategic priorities, flow of information, knowing what's going on inside and outside of the organization, so you can actually move forward, and then motivators, getting your people behind the plan. So again, what I promised, 
to help you get alignment on a plan and buy in with your team to create strategic priorities that will move them forward instead of doing projects that waste time and money. Create conversations so the whole organization knows what's going on and what they should be doing next. And then how to identify risks and opportunities before it's too late to do anything about it. Again, strategic planning is a huge, huge topic and I wanna be able to give you guys a few actionable items and a few sort of methodologies that I use to help you create a more successful uh, strategic plan and strategic planning implementation. Alrighty. So best practice number one, before you go through your strategic planning process, get information from different levels of the organization. So it'll give you different perspectives. Um, for, so you'll get, obviously, if you're in HR, you see everything with an HR lens. If you're in marketing, you see everything from a marketing lens. But if you're on the front lines, then you see it from the actual implementation side. So being able to understand all of those different perspectives will help you create a more robust strategy. Pull versus push. If you're pushing um, a strategy down on your team and saying, this is why we're doing this, and just track the whip and making them listen to you, you're gonna have a harder time actually getting them to contribute and want to help you, the owner or the manager, uh, reach their goals. Basically, it's what's in it for them, in a matter of speaking. But if you get information from them and ask them to contribute to the process, then you're actively engaging them as part of the strategic planning process. That way people feel hurt. Um, they want to contribute, they want to feel satisfied, and they want to feel part of a team. So that's how you're going to get more alignment on your strategic plan to get more things done. And then you might actually learn something. There'll be a lot of times where you don't know all the things that are going on, or it'll be like a whack in the head to say, oh yeah, this is the time that we really need to focus on. Um, so when we work with clients on engagements, we do a survey ahead of time to figure out, do like a pulse check of the company. What that's really useful for is you you get an idea of those strategic priorities. It says, okay, you know, if three quarters of the company is focused on this one thing and says this is a problem, we need to fix it. And then you don't worry about all the other things that you need to do as a priority, you just focus on the things that your team and your management all agrees upon, you have consensus, and it's so much easier to move forward and get it done than having to fight people. We all agree, let's move forward and fix it so that we can take the next step and move forward to where we wanna go. So best practice number two, let everyone contribute to the plan. Now, I mentioned this, uh, alluded to this in forms of communication, but when we talk about the strategic priorities, and we picking, talk about measurements and KPIs, you wanna pick a goal that everybody can contribute to, okay? So a way to remember that is everybody's on the same team. I'll use a, a football analogy, if I may, is that you have offense, you have defense, you have special teams. Everybody ultimately contributes to the team winning. Offense does it in their way, defense does it in their way, special teams does it in their own way. So in your organization, Look at your vision, look at your strategic priorities and the things you really wanna focus on, attach a measurement to each of those things, and then figure out how everybody in your organization can do their part to contribute to it. So I say see alignment. Alignment is the most important uh, part of the whole strategic planning process. That's why when SME strategy works with companies, we call it aligned strategy development. There's no sense in making a strategy unless everybody's on board with it. So moving forward, whether it's an uh, issue of teamwork, an issue of communication, or uh, whatever else you're working through, is getting everybody from management team down aligned on the plan and create a way for them to contribute to it they need to know how their job is influencing the future of the organization. So I hope that makes sense. And I'll talk a bit more about that. Again, if you have any questions, you can type them into the side right now or wait till the end and I will uh, answer them all in there. But I'm for now just focused on this and I think we'll have a good amount of time after. So we talk about the strategic priorities, getting stuff done. Our best practice is to pick a handful of priorities, like three or four, and then pick the most important one. So I'm sure you've got a bunch of stuff that you gotta focus on in your organization. Pick three or four, and here's the rationale. If you pick 10 priorities, 10 things you need to focus on, it's way too complicated for your team to understand, and it means that you have maximum 
let's say, 10% of energy, time, resources to dedicate to that strategic priority. You might still have to do those things, but they aren't like high priority items for this quarter or this year. So pick a handful of priorities because it's easier for everybody to remember. Notice how I do my points in threes. Everybody, you can say focus on this, focus on this, and focus on this. And of all of our priorities, this is the most important. Customer satisfaction, adding new customers, adding new revenue, reducing waste, um, managing inventory. I've heard it called must win battles. So the important thing is to figure out what are the must win battles? What are the things that are most important to your organization? And what is the one that's going to move your organization closer towards its vision? Again, pick priorities that everybody can help move the needle on. And so I'll explain KPIs really quick because I don't think I did before. When you have a strategic priority, you want to attach a KPI, a measurement to it. How are you going to figure out your success? And the best practice we use is going from X, your current state, to Y, your future state, by date. Okay, so we talk about smart goals and stuff, but X to Y by date. And so look at it like it would be your gas gauge from zero to full, from X to Y. So pick priorities that everybody can help move the needle on. In every part of your organization, they know that they can contribute to the success of that measurement. And that's alignment. That way, everyone's on the same team and everybody plays their position. Everybody does what they do well to contribute. But if you don't tell them what the priorities are, and if you don't tell them how to measure it, then there's no way they're gonna know what to contribute on and they're just gonna do whatever. So you really have to communicate with them and let them know um, what they need to be focusing on, what you want them to focus on. And even before that, you ask them what was the most important thing. So they've been part of this process from day one and it's not like you're just pushing it on them, okay? So handful of priorities and then pick the most important one. All right, so now we're talking, getting more into like the strategic planning process in itself. This is the like the most pyramid, okay? When we talk about alignment, everything gets aligned. The vision is your desired future for the organization. Your mission is your purpose. Why do you exist? What do you do? Who do you do it for? And what makes you different than anybody else? In this context, really quick, because I know that there's some people from nonprofits here, mission-based organizations, um, and vision-based organizations, depending on uh, how you approach strategy, um, you might want to interchange your vision and mission, okay? You might be guided by mission instead of guided by vision. Not always, but sometimes. Objectives are the things that you're working at, your goals. Those are your strategic priorities. Your strategic priorities should align with your mission, and your mission should align with your vision. Everything is in line. Your strategies are overarching things that you're going to do to achieve your objectives. And again, once you achieve your objectives, it's gonna help you accomplish your mission and help you accomplish your vision. And then the tactics are the individual line items that are gonna move the needle here, that are gonna move the needle here, that are gonna move the needle here, and they're gonna move the needle here. Does that make sense? So make sure everything in your organization is aligned. If one of your objectives doesn't contribute to your mission or your vision, then you shouldn't be doing it. Similarly, if one of your tactics doesn't move forward a strategy or an objective, then there's no sense in doing it in the window of strategic priorities. Again, all of these things need to be in line. Okay, moving on. So best practice number five, create a culture that supports what you want to achieve. So a lot of people talking about culture um, within organizations, you hear about tech companies saying, we got a great culture. Every company, every organization has a culture. If you're a small company, it's probably derived by the owner or manager. They believe the things that you believe. The thing with culture is that it starts to morph in itself when you hire people, when you bring people into the team. So um, creating a culture that supports what you're trying to achieve, that's why they say hiring for fit, um, is super, super important. That's one of the things that will help move your uh, strategy forward that isn't on paper easy to understand. 
you can have the best plan, but you need your people to be behind it. If they're not down for what you're doing, if they're not into your plan and your strategy, you're toast. So uh, this is famously said, I want to say Michael Porter uh, said, culture eats strategy and just wrote a blog about our opinion on culture eats strategy. What does it mean? And again, if you have the best plan, but people aren't for it, or if you have the best plan, but there aren't systems in place to let people know how they can contribute to it, your plan is toast. You might move forward on it, but you know we're talking about 100% execution. We're not talking about like 40, 50% to plan. We're talking about increasing and moving forward on everything as much as possible. And if you don't think about culture, you don't think about the people in your organization when it comes to strategic planning, you're in trouble, okay? So remember, you got to create a culture that supports what you want to achieve as an organization and empower your people to be able to move forward on that strategy. It's not one of those things that can be done, but when we talk about change and change management, that's how you start to create that culture. And culture is created by everybody in the organization at all levels. Okay, we talk about values a little bit, and this is just a small tangent. Values are the things that people care about and that they value inside your organization. So your values are going to drive your culture. Okay, now values are really useful as an in or out statement. It's a set of behaviors. If you have this, these values, if you support this culture, um, you will be in. If it doesn't fit within our culture, you're out. So when we talk about decision rights and we talk about culture and we talk about strategic planning objectives, really, really easy for your team to know, should I do this? Is it in line with our strategic plan? No, then I don't do it. Should I do this? Is it in line with our strategic plan? Yes, then I move forward on it. So in or out statements, but creating the culture of, we're moving forward on this plan, we're moving forward on this strategy, and this is how we're gonna do it. And I'd be happy to explain that uh, later on. Number six, pick the right measurements, okay? So we talked about KPIs. We talked about attaching measurements to your goals. And it's so important to pick the right measurements. Now, it's easy for me to say from a computer here saying pick the right measurements. You can just say, okay, we're gonna say, we're gonna use uh, increased customer satisfaction. So how do you measure that? Customer satisfaction could be measured uh, a variety of different ways. You can measure it a uh, net promoter score. You can measure it in returns, like people coming back to the store and repeat purchases. Those are both metrics. You could do an in-person survey. You could do a different customer satisfaction survey. The right measurements are key because it's going to help people focus on whatever the objective is. So let's say you have a different measurement that's increased sales, broadly speaking. So you could increase sales multiple ways. You could increase the frequency that customers buy from you. You could increase total ticket sales. Um, so repeat ticket sales, or you could add sales. So saying, okay, I want to uh, make sure that we upsell everybody 20%. Those strategies are all different and they're all going to impact people's behaviors differently. So when I talk about people will do what they're rewarded on, it goes back to culture, you can talk the talk. You can say, this is what we care about, these are our values, this is our culture, these are our strategies, these are our objectives. You can walk the talk and say, yep, you know, these are the things I'm doing and I'm exemplifying this and blah, blah, blah. And then you actually have to reward the walk, which means that people are going to naturally gravitate to what they get rewarded on. If you uh, value work-life balance in your organization, but then you're actually rewarding the people that work like 15 hour days, then you're saying something different than what your culture is actually supporting. So which one do you think people are going to move towards? If you're rewarding working long hours and overtime, but you're saying that you care about work-life balance, people are going to do the things that you're rewarding. So again, if you're talking about quality or speed, whichever one you reward is what people are going to gravitate towards, no matter what your plan is. So again, getting alignment between your measurements and your rewards for those achieving those measurements is key. 
Different measurements will have different results, different approaches, different strategies, different tactics. So uh, it's good to uh, create one, create a KPI, create a measurement, test it, and if it doesn't work, change it. Totally fine. It's your plan. That's the best thing about strategic plans and strategy is that it's designed to be changed. So the, the reason I don't advocate a huge, huge plan is because you sec the second you write a plan is basically out of date. So use strategic planning and use strategy development as a living document to help you move forward and guide your decision making as a team. Number seven, this one's really, really important. Learn how to create change. Okay, so the, there's a change model called the Cotter change model. The real really good book called Driving Change by Cotter. And it talks about change management. It's basically going from where you are, your current state, to your desired future state and how to get there. So if you've ever tried to like lose weight, gain weight, stop smoking, start stop drinking, making your bed, any of those like personal things, it's not as easy as just one day I'm going to decide to make my bed every day. Some people are like that. They can Quit cold turkey. Now, you have to understand your organization, big or small, old or young, has norms and things and ways of doing things. So if you're going to change those things, in this point of the room, I would put up my hand and say, who likes change? Typically, no one likes really change. So same thing with your organization, same thing with your people. They are going to resist change. So if you can understand this model at a basic level, it's going to help you move forward the changes that you want to see in your organization. So whether you're trying to get the right people to participate, whether you're trying to break down communication silos, whether you're trying to manage your growth, whether you're trying to manage your time, um, whether you're like too busy, these things creating change is going to help you in every aspect of your planning and your management. So this is what the model looks like. So we go through this informally, not in steps when we do planning with clients, but I'll just run through the meets real quick. So establish a sense of urgency. That's why change? Why do it now? <clears throat> what are the alternatives to not changing, to staying the same way? Creating urgency is super important. Obviously it's step number one, but it's really to get people off their asses to start doing something different. Creating a guiding coalition. If you're a management team, if you're a leadership team, if you're doing your strategic planning offsite and you're there, you're part of the guiding coalition. You also need to recruit people from different levels of the organization to buy into your plan, to start leading that future. Develop a change vision. Again, part of the planning process. What is the vision for the future? Not this huge vision. I mean, the vision is huge and you have to describe it, but a change vision. What is that future state gonna look like? If after all of these changes, we hopped in a time machine and we went to that like ideal future and we got out, what would it look like? So here's a little piece on, on visioning is again, hop in a time machine, we got to that place, how would you describe it? What does your staff look like? What do your people look like? What do your customers look like? What are your market segments? Where do you operate? How much money are you making? What does your office look like? How are the work days for your employees? What does the commute to work look like? Every little aspect, what, what color is your desk? Every little piece of that is like a br blueprint for your house. And if you don't tell people the blueprint, if you don't tell people what you're building, then there's no way they're gonna build it the way you want. So get alignment and agreement on the blueprint of the future of your company or the blueprint for the future uh, of your change, uh, change strategy and tell everybody about it. Because as soon as you tell people about it, it makes it real and they can understand it. Okay, so this is step number four. Communicate a change vision for buy-in. So that means starting to talk to people about it. Let people know what you're trying to build. Let people know what you're working towards. Empowering broad-based action. We talk about helping people move forward on the strategic plan, contributing to it. How can your phone person, your CR, or customer, whatever, phone person, contribute to your strategic plan? They might feel like they don't contribute. How can somebody who's like making burgers or in your back office, how can they contribute to it? You're paying them. They're there. They're doing work. They have a choice, and you have a choice. 
either they're going to do work that doesn't contribute to the strategy or they're going to do work that does. It's up to you to get them on board to do the work that's going to contribute to the strategy and to move towards uh, the future that you guys want for your company. Generating short-term wins, okay? So that's really making the change real. You know, if you're losing weight and you step on the scale and nothing happens, nothing happens, nothing happens, nothing happens, you're going to get deflated and you're just going to give up. Well, the same thing's going to happen with your team. And I'll talk a bit more about that after. But create short-term wins that create momentum and make it real for people. What are the things you can do today, tomorrow, the next day that's going to move that forward? When we work with clients, we talk about basically doing a 90-day plan. What are the action steps outside of this meeting that are really going to solidify that change? Who's responsible for it? When is it going to start? When is it going to end? And how are we going to move it forward? So never letting up. That basically means whenever you're, you got your short-term wins, now keep the momentum going. You're not done yet. In fact, you're never done. Strategic planning and strategic change never really stops unless you quit or die. Um, so you need to keep pushing forward after those quick wins and keep building on it. Uh, we work with clients quarterly basis to make sure that they've actually worked on their strategic change. And then incorporate changes in the culture. That's making it part of life. That's how uh, change stays. Okay, so if you look at it into three parts, we have this part of the beginning before the change actually happens. Then we have this part right here. Actually, it should be two and three. Um, when things are actually moving, and then this is like refreezing it to that future state. So get wins early, and change is real when people start to see it. If they don't see change, if they don't see things happening or movement happening, then they're going to go back to the way it was. And then the people that are moving change are going to have to fight with these people to say, well, we should have done it my way. So they're going to hold back your change if they don't see it. And the other thing is there will always be people who hold back your change. So you have a choice. You can either put them somewhere else in your organization where they can actually contribute or get them out. Because if you have a bunch of people in your organization that are moving change forward and then a handful that are pulling it back, then they're just going to make everybody else that is working forward work that much harder. And eventually they're going to lose steam. The ones who don't want to change have like more power than the ones that do often. Okay. And then the final best practice is communicate. So up and down, talk within the organization at every level. Tell people about the plan and tell them why. Urgency. So if you're a CEO or leader and you need to talk to your managers and then they need to talk to their employees and they need to talk to that level down. It's like a make sure there's no broken telephone. And that's why we create a, a plan that's easy to represent on a one page. But the, the leaders need to be able to tell the managers everything about the plan and what needs to be done. And then they need to be able to tell their people everything about the plan and what needs to be done and how they can contribute. If you, you can't really expect the CEO to tell everybody, so that's why it disseminates through the organization. And then we talk about cascading goals that we won't talk about today. And there we go. Leaders tell managers, managers tell employees, and then the information goes back up because it's important to have open communication throughout the whole organization. Understand what's going on at all times. It's going to help people make better decisions. It's going to help empower them for action. It's going to help everything move forward towards your goals. So in summary, have a vision and make it known. Okay, Make sure that everybody knows where they're going and why they want to go there. Get your people involved and create a culture of teamwork. Let them contribute to the vision. It's going to help make their wor work more rewarding. It's going to make them more excited. And it's going to create that culture of saying, hey, yeah, we're working towards something. The reason they have such a great culture in startup companies is because everybody knows that there's so much momentum and they're building something big. You're building something big in your own organization. Even if you're in manufacturing or service company or whatever business you're in, not for profit, if you have an exciting enough vision or mission, then the people that work for you and the work with you should be excited about it too. That's why they work for you and not for somebody else. So make sure you have that exciting vision, that exciting mission, that exciting purpose. So people get stoked about coming to work, stoked about finishing that project, stoked about helping everybody else around them be better and be successful. 
I mean, I, I'm honestly stoked about my job because I get to help you all be better and successful. That's what gets me excited. Obviously nervous at times too, but excited. Um, make goals simple that everyone can contribute to. You need to know everybody in your organization can help move forward that strategy. And you need to tell them what it is. Make sure that it's simple to understand, explain, and measure. I'm going to repeat that one for emphasis. Make sure it's simple to understand, to explain, and to measure. If you have 10 strategic priorities, how the hell is anybody supposed to remember what they need to focus on? So a handful of priorities, a measurement attached to each, and some strategic uh, tactics to move it forward, then you're going to be more successful. And then the last piece is being proactive at looking inward and outward. The world changes fast and won't wait for you. So do strategy on an ongoing basis to move it forward. So look at the inputs. What are your people saying? What's the trends environment? So pestle, political, economical, legal, technological, environmental. And just understand, keep your pulse on everything and it'll help you uh, be more prepared to make decisions in the future and in the present. That's basically everything. Um, if you have any questions about these things, so I have uh, on smestrategies.net slash resources, there's a strategic plan template, there's a map so you can visualize, and there's some questions you can ask your team moving forward. So if you need any of those resources, please let me know. Um, and then finally, if you're looking to run the whole process with your team, we actually made a video course recently. Um, so it has about five hours of content with 10 bonus templates, uh, and then that video about creating alignment. Um, so we made that to help managers outside of Vancouver run the strategic planning process with their team. And so we go into each uh, different module um, in depth to understand how to run it and the questions to ask and why it's important. So normally the course is uh, $995 uh, today only to encourage action. I normally hate these uh, incentive things, but yes, I'm going to incentivize you to buy today. Uh, you will get a $300 off promo with a promo code 300 webinar. Okay. So if you go to strategicplanningtrainingcourse.com, it's also available on the SME strategy website, but strategicplanningtrainingcourse.com and you'll get a $300 uh, promo code to uh, video course. And so with that, I just want to answer any questions that you guys uh, might have. So there's a few of us that stuck around on here. Um, so did you have any questions for those of you that are still here about the planning process, about what we chatted about today, or um, any other best practices uh, moving forward? Or if you're having challenges, what are those challenges? And I'd be happy to offer uh, my expertise and background to help uh, make those easier for you. And thank you, by the way. I really appreciate you all uh, taking the time out on this Tuesday afternoon to participate in this training. It was really fun. I really enjoyed uh, sharing with you, and I definitely will be uh, doing more uh, more training like this. So, And, of course, if you don't have any other questions, have a wonderful day. Uh, but hopefully there's a few questions I can uh, answer for you um, that will help you move forward. And do check out, and, and also if you're looking to do more training on this, or if you're like, hey, I have a topic that I want to learn more about, uh, let me know in the chat box as well, or send some feedback uh, at SME Strategy to let us know um, how we can create content and create tools that will help you with your strategy and team development. Excellent. Cheers, Brett. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks, Kim. All right. Well, it looks like... Uh, Everybody's uh, got the information they need, so I will give you uh, another 30 seconds a minute. Off the top of your head, can you provide an example of a well-known vision? Well, Google's vision, this is a good example that I like to use. Uh, thanks, Amanda. Um, Google wanted to be like the source for web traffic. Okay, I don't remember it verbatim, but their vision was, to be the de facto source where people uh, get information on the internet. And I would argue that they successfully achieved that recently. Basically, you could look at those as like, how do you know if we got there? Well, market share. And then when Google decided to change to Alphabet, which was their different companies, they had to do it. They had to do that reorganization strategically because the vision of Google was achieved. And if you had a company that was doing self-driving cars that Google owned, 
that had nothing to do with search. Something in virtual reality has nothing to do with search. Something to do with machine learning has nothing to do with search. So Alf or Google had to change their vision. And instead of actually just changing the vision because Google's vision is still the same to be the source for information on the internet. But then Alphabet started off these little companies that, um, that was able to better achieve or have more alignment uh, with the mission. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, does that answer your question, Rob? I mean, there's a few examples that I have uh, sample vision and mission statements, and I also have a blog on um, sample strategic plans. I think I've like dug up like 20 or 25 different strategic plans um, and put them in a blog on the website, just to give you an idea of different companies' vision statements. But it should be aspirational. Uh, it should be exciting for everybody in the future. Um, and it should be like a horizon. So hard to achieve and then in the future if you actually achieve it. Um, excellent, cool. And I mean, different organizations have different planning cycles. If you're a small business, like I wouldn't recommend a planning cycle of more than like one or three years. But if you're a city, then your planning cycle might be like 25 to 50 years. Um, and some like Japanese organizations uh, have like 100 year planning cycles. So, oh yeah, there you go, see? <laughs> there you go, good. Google's a good example of that. So um, yeah, there's another really cool one, Johnson & Johnson has a credo. Um, and so when we talk about the mission statement and the purpose statement, and we, how the purpose statement should align with the core customer, um, then it, they have four core customers, and so they basically explain their purpose uh, for each. Um, so yeah, the, the real thing with, with a vision statement is like, what does our company look like in the future? What will it be? Um, some people have like short and sweet ones that are like for others. And so we talk about that as well as like a short and sweet vision statement, like you could tweet it is really for everybody else to understand. But if you want something internally, then some people have like to be the market leader in this, to be on the horizon of this, to contribute to this to make every child, like again, like drinking water for all children, housing for all people. Like those are big aspirational vision statements that exist for a lot of people. You're like the Red Cross to provide aid everywhere that it is needed um, in the world, those type of things. So yeah, excellent. Anybody else have any questions? And if you have any feedback, if I would talk too fast or too slowly or not enough information, or if you didn't get your questions answered, please let me know. And I mean, like if you're like hoping for something else, um, probably edit this part out at the end. Uh, but yeah, no, I just really wanna be able to provide the best value um, for this. So please let me know. Excellent. All right. Well, for those of you that are still here, I really appreciate you. Uh, I mean, I appreciate everybody, even if you left. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you guys coming out and sharing and then do check out the, the training course. And um, if there's anything else I can offer you, just please, uh, please let me know. And uh, so with that, I think if there's no more questions, I will, uh, cheers, Rob. Um, yeah, I will call it just, uh, just before one o'clock on Tuesday. So thank you all so much. I really appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to sharing with you another time. Cheers, guys.